When you think of subassemblies, you may typically think of something like this, where you have a legs and body and maybe some of the arms left off. This is a typical subassembly, but actually you can be smart with your subassemblies, and um, particularly on smaller and character models, and particularly stuff like Dark Angels with robes and Space Marines with capes. Now, what I mean by this is, for example, Azrael. This is not the natural way to do the subassembly for Azrael, in my opinion, but I think it's the best way. You can paint entirely under there, get its feet, um, and when you have different colors and sort of flowing robes, it can be very messy and difficult to paint. But if you split it up like this, it's basically easy. So as you can see, I've painted the sort of purple robe underneath and his foot, and it also means making the base, um, doing the base is much easier. Paint the watcher separately. Now I'll just do a few more coats on that, paint the robes, and then just glue it down. And then he'll be, he'll be good to go. So certainly made the process of quite a sort of tricky miniature a lot simpler. Now there are other examples I've got here as well. Let me just pull them up. Some more simple ones. Again, another Dark Angel, and this is particularly effective with Dark Angels. You see he's got this tablet, and it blocks off quite a lot of the miniature, makes it very difficult to paint stuff like the legs. Um, and it means you have to touch up many, many mistakes. But you can generally glue most of the model together and just leave sort of in, in two parts. I think this is the optimum way to do sub-assemblies. You could paint this entire model, um, you know, on the base. Then you could paint, for example, um, the details in the back and then just paint the in of, inside of his robe. And then when that's done, you can glue it together. Um, but actually, it doesn't even really need glue. It, it stays, well, okay, it doesn't stay, but, you know, you can look at it on the shelf like that. And and if you do full sub-assemblies where, say, you keep legs and arms and everything else separate, backpacks separate, it's too much. It's too, too demotivating. You don't want to sort of get stuck into the model because you can't really look at it. So I find this is kind of the optimum um, middle ground for sub-assemblies um, when it comes to particularly stuff like light capes, light tabards on dark armor. It really makes the painting process a lot simpler and it means that you can sort of get inside the bits of the model that are usually quite inaccessible to a paintbrush. And uh, it's not just dark angels. It's, it's many other models. Um, most of my models are Space Marines, but I'm sure this is true for other models too. Here's a chaplain, and uh, if you got this kit, you'd realize that this is a very obvious sub-assembly. Um, <laughs> it's almost uh, ridiculous how this model goes together. There's nothing inside there, but you might want to paint this uh, this sort of tabard robe thing. Um, well, yeah, it's robes, isn't it? You might want to paint this robes, these robes um, a completely different color to sort of the leg armor and also you might just want to be able to paint the legs without having to worry about access issues so just having that sub assembly <laughs> simple makes a lot of sense um, and also you can still look at the model and leave it on your shelf like that even before it's painted um, and it's not just multi-part kits you can also do this with some of the monopost kits as well um, here's an old firstborn that I was painting and I managed to sort of leave him in two parts one sec Oh. <laughs> it's got quite a lot of paint in him now, so it's harder to... There we go. But I'm because I'm still painting this guy, I basically sprayed this guy black, and I can get to the cloak completely and the power armor, keep it black. This guy is sprayed white because he's mostly tabard, and you can really get in behind it. Still need a bit of touching up to do on that. Um, but then paint that as a whole, paint the inside, then glue it, then finish it off. So that's kind of the idea behind this sub-assembly. Very, very good for Dark Angels. But other characters such as Helbrecht, you can also generally find these solutions for, and it is unique to each model how you do it. But in this case, he has a cloak that obscures very much well, the entire back of him. But if you glued that on, I mean, it's going to be difficult to paint and get in there, and you're going you're gonna to know you haven't got it really, and it's going to be very hard to paint the cloak sort of smoothly. But you want that. You want to be able to paint that smoothly. So I propose that you would paint this, just like any other Space Marine, paint the back. Then do your smooth cloak, very simple. Then glue it. 
Um, and only once you've glued it, would you, for example, then paint the outer part of the cloak. So you have to be tactical about how you sort of the order and sequence you paint things in. But if you are, this makes your life a hell of a lot easier. But Helbrecht, you can just sit on the shelf like that. Um, the only other parts of the sub-assembly I have left off are his servitors, but that you know, that makes, makes sense. I think you, you know, that they're, they're completely separate to the rest of the model and you probably want to paint them separately. Um, so thank you for watching. Very simple ideas in this video, but I just wanted to communicate um, something that I do quite a lot and maybe haven't seen that much, um, you know, that too many videos on because it is different for each model. And generally, if you look at painting guides on online, um, you'll see the model fully assembled because it's much nicer to view it like that. And it is more motivating to, I think, to see a whole model sort of come together. Usually the temptation is to glue everything together. But if you can find a, a natural break point that will make your life a lot easier, um, like with Azrael here, I think it's certainly worth it. And I don't have to worry about trying to jam my brush into difficult to reach places. I can just paint the watcher. You know, it's j uh, some, some people might have kept the watcher separate, but I kind of wanted to glue them down because you, you also have to think about which parts of the model you're sort of touching. And generally I prefer to sort of glue as much as possible to a base so you only have to hold a base, which makes, makes painting much simpler. But in this case, you can paint all of that on a base. And then all I'm going to have to do is get under there, which is actually very, very simple. Just have to paint, get a sort of a base coat under there, um, paint, the, paint the leg, and I can glue them in, and then I'm good to go on the rest of the model. And uh, it does go. You have, there you go. It goes down fine. Yeah, it's not fully on, but I'm not going to jam it in yet, but it, but it, will, go, it will go, no issues. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. I'll probably keep working on Azrael. I want to get him painted. I'm quite enjoying it, to be honest. And... Uh, yeah, this is the first watch I ever painted, and that was, that was very fun. So thank you, and uh, thanks to my new subscribers too. I got a, a boatload of new subscribers in my last video, which was awesome. And if you uh, watch this as a first-time viewer, do check out my other, viewer, my other videos and uh, drop a subscribe if you would like. And otherwise, have a great day.